Parallel counterflow chiller time. Um, as some of you may be aware, I've been working on a parallel counterflow chiller for the past four months or so. Just sort of tinkering along and getting little bits of it done. And as I've been doing it, I've been recording um, some of the key parts of it so I can put together a video and show you what I've done. Now this parallel counterflow chiller, I got the idea from um, an iBrew magazine. It was something I saw online. Um, there were just some quick photographs of it using PVC pipe and copper inside. And I'd been using a counterflow um, chiller that was just spiraled up. Um, and I thought, hmm, this is quite a cool idea. I wouldn't mind giving it a crack. So here it is. Now it's not completely 100% finished yet. Um, I'm still waiting on a pump. Um, actually I'm still waiting to purchase it. I have some other financial commitments so it is just temporarily sitting with some of the hoses that I have until I can finish off um, some of the hard plumbing. Um, I will be putting a pump down here so that it has its own dedicated march pump uh, to handle pumping and recirculating into the kettle. So for the interim I have a silicon line that goes along and uses one of my other pumps that's underneath the bench. So it's a little bit of distance away, um, so it's not exactly optimum, but hey, for the purposes of testing, it worked really well. So to give you a quick rundown before we jump into actually the design and build of it all, basically it is copper pipe that runs through a PVC pipe, and the PVC pipe has water that runs in the opposite direction. So the wort runs one way and the water runs in the opposite direction and they transfer their heat. As I said I've run a couple of tests on it and it works just exactly the same as uh, my coiled counterflow chiller. So it's got the same amount of copper in it as one of the convoluted counterflow chillers that you can buy from a brew store. So it's got 3.5 meters of, of um, pipeline in it. So that's adequate um, to bring the volume of work down uh, to pitching temperature. I think it took me 20 minutes to bring boiling work down to 26 degrees, um, pretty close to my pitching temperature. And that involved recirculating back into the kettle and just kept on pumping out and recirculating it through until my core volume of my kettle was down to that pitching temperature. Now down here I have a temperature gauge just for shits and giggles, just so they can see the temperature of the work coming out, because uh, most of the time I use electronic temperature gauges. And I also have an aeration stone, a stainless um, steel aeration stone that's inside this T-joint. So once I've finished recirculating the beer around, I can flip this T-ball around, um, T-ball valve around, and the beer will come out of here, and I can hook it up to my oxygen, and I can aerate the work when it comes out. But anyway, um, I'll leave you with the rest of the video on my build. Um, any questions and bits and pieces that you have, just click through and watch all the videos. I will break it down into three parts um, because it was quite a long build. Um, and I'll try and put links to all the parts that I purchased off eBay in the description of each video. I want to give you a quick rundown on actually what we're building here um, so that you get an understanding. And then I'll talk about the bits and pieces that I've chosen for doing it. Now this is one end of um, one of the runs for the parallel counterflow. So it's a couple of T's of a joiner with some compression fittings, half inch compression fittings, and the end that's screwing. As I said, I'll show you the parts um, as we go. But this is just to give you the rough idea of actually what it's meant to be doing. So this compression fitting here I have drilled out so that a copper pipe can pass all the way through. Yeah. Let's just sort of put the cap back on. We won't put the ferrule on it and tighten it up because we don't want this one to stay there. Alrighty, this is just a small piece of copper pipe and just obviously an end piece um, to the counterflow just to show you the theory behind it. Now the copper pipe has the wort running through it and in the inside of the tube the gap between the copper pipe and the inside of the PVC tube is where water will be running in the opposite direction. So cold water running one way and wort, hot wort, boiling wort, running in the opposite direction and they exchange heat. Now these little crossbar bits is so that as the water comes in it can't come out here because it gets blocked instead it comes down and it flows. So it does a zigzag all the way along to as many runs of these types of chillers that you want. Now the beer, when it comes out of this end we hook it up with 
I'll put a silicon hose. So a silicon pipe will come through and hook into the next bit of copper that's sticking out of here. Now the reason for silicon is that we can take it off and we can look through and we can get line of sight. So we can look all the way down the copper pipe, which will be running our wort, and we can check for any scrapes or debris or anything like that. With a traditional counterflow, it's a spiral. So you don't have line of sight to look through the copper pipe and make sure that there's no uh, debris or anything in there, which primarily is the main reason for building a parallel counterflow. Not that you get a lot of debris in a traditional counterflow because you do flush it out and you clean it all the time so there should really be nothing stuck in there but you never know you can't tell so especially when you're dealing with wort and you're putting it in the fermenter if there's any type of bug or something inside this copper pipe ugh, yuck you're going to be creating an infection all the time and it's better to be safe and know that your pipes are clean than not knowing because you can't see so that's the main reason that I am building parallel counterflow chart also I think they look pretty smart. So, anyway, alrighty, bits. What kind of bits do we need? Well, I've been playing around with this for a while now, actually quite a few months, to try and see if I can source bits off the shelf that everybody can buy. 20mm pressure pipe. Now I'm going to talk about the dimensions of 20mm pressure pipe pretty soon. We're also using half inch copper pipe. This is refrigeration pipe, so this is the soft copper, the copper that you can easily bend when it's in a long length, obviously, little small bits you can't bend. Half inch compression fittings, a 20mm to half inch tapped pipe connector, and a 20mm T-joint. Some silicon hose, did you want them all together? And that's it. We're also going to throw in some other bits and pieces like some stainless steel barbs, quick disconnects. Now these are all the optional bits and pieces and these are the bits that um, I use for connecting up the water and for connecting up um, the work that's coming out at the end. But for the purposes of the counterflow build as it is, these are all the bits we need. So they all fit in together. This bit here, fits into here, this bit screws in here, this bit goes into there, this bit goes into there. So there you go, there's the type of configuration that we're going to be putting together. Now, talking about pipes. This 20mm pipe has an inside diameter of 16.5mm. This 20mm pipe has an inside diameter of 21.25mm. So, not all 20mm pipe is built the same. This stuff is used for water, so this is plumbing pressure pipe. This stuff is used for electrical conduct, so it's electrical conduct pipe. Okay, and they're both called 20mm pipe. So you, what you want is you want 20mm pressure pipe. You don't want 20mm conduct pipe. However, this is a 20mm conduct pipe connection, which is what we want to use with our 20mm pressure pipe connection because it has a nice snug fit. So we're going to be using 20mm pipe and other 20mm pipe fittings. Now this is all stuff that you can find off eBay. This 20mm pipe doesn't allow for a lot of water between the outside of the copper and the inside of the 20mm PVC pipe. So that water is going to heat up really fast this is going to get hotter faster. The wall thickness of this PVC pipe isn't as thick as this 20mm PVC pipe and it's going to start to buckle and it's going to start to weaken with the high temperatures. With this pipe however, we've got a lot more space between the outside of the copper pipe and the inside of the PVC tube so we can get more water passing and we've also got a decent thickness wall so this is going to be able to withstand the temperature difference um, of the water as it's heating up.
<clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is we want to fix these 20mm conduit pipe half inch connectors nice and threaded we can screw into those whatever we want to screw into them into our 20mm pressure pipe T-joint connectors now if we look down in there there's some little lugs you can see some little tiny lugs just down in there that's a stopper for when you poke a pipe in the pipe will stop when it gets to those little lugs so it's not going to push past and block this hole here so that you're not losing flow okay so that's the purposes of those little lugs this is a little bit longer so you can see it's going to come in and it's going to block off this flow this part of the connector is the right outside diameter to marry with the inside diameter of this this part here however isn't so we'll chop it off I'm just going to chop it off with a pipe cutter if you haven't got a pipe cutter a hacksaw will do perfectly fine I'm just screwing in just some handy half inch stainless steel connections just so that I can get a little bit of leverage on the torque so I can turn this end piece around without it jumping out and chop off the end and then unscrew that bit back off so now this is going to fit in snugly without blocking any water flow to fit these together I'm going to be using ADOS PVC pipe cement this stuff is magic absolutely magic but it stinks so make sure that you are wearing adequate ventilation apparatus or open a window make sure that you've got some ventilation make sure that you've got some air flowing through so you don't get all lightheaded and fuzzy after doing too many pipes <laughs>